Congratulations. 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 Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to right smash there. like. <laughs> that right there is now our advertisement. <laughs> I'm just cut right. out the like, comment, subscribe. It's just gonna be that. Damn on that bell. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. on that bell. Uh, hey, uh, welcome back. Um, I binged this crazy show on Netflix last weekend. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. The uh, Tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> um, and gosh darn, there's a lot going on in that show. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess. Uh, it, so Hutch, for those were, who what are, were your key takeaways? What were the most important things that you learned? Uh, that Carol Baskin's a murderer. <laughs> uh, Good. <laughs> And yeah. uh, <laughs> God. I, uh, I learned and that too, and I haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick question: If you had to join one tiger sex cult, which tiger sex cult would you join? Oh God! Um, uh, the one where everyone's living in uh, big, uh, expensive houses—that seemed like the, the right one to go for. <laughs> The one in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> <laughs> the one in Myrtle Beach. I think it was the one in Myrtle Conveniently, Beach. Conveniently, yeah. it's the closest one. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I, I, I think it's actually shut down now, though. I think he got... They said they got raided. Ooh. By the, uh, to the Jujo. <laughs> so to I the got, I got a question. As someone who... I, I think I'm the only one who hasn't seen this yeah. now. Um, oh, does this tried. show have... I, I don't even want to try. Like, Brittany gave me a synopsis of every episode at the end of her wa- her watching every episode. I'm sure there's some stuff I missed, though, because yeah. it's just so insane. Well, I want to ask, does uh, uh, Sigmund and Freud come up in this at all? With yes. their white Siberian tigers? Yes. Okay. Uh, only because... Sigmund uh, Freud? I don't know what their names Joe are. Joe Exotic Siegfried is like, boy. fuck those guys. I'm better than them. Mm-hmm. We have magic, too. Because a 10-year-old boy taught him magic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he did it. And yeah, so uh, it, it, one of the first Antle. things he did was like a magic show <laughs> with tigers. One of one yeah. of the guys actually sold some of the tigers to them. Wow, really? They've all sold tigers to each other. Like honestly, like if a guy owns a tiger, he probably got it from like these people. So <laughs> all right, it is like I felt like. I saw an ad for it on Twitter uh, at work, and I told everyone at work, I was like, oh shit, this looks like a batshit crazy uh, (laughs) documentary, I'm gonna go home and watch it, and then I came home and watched it, and I was like, that was way crazier than I thought it would be, like, every episode as it ended, they'd always add, like, a kind of a cliffhanger, and you're like, oh my god, please tell me more about that thing that you just mentioned, (laughs) so you'd watch the next episode. (laughs) Uh, but it was just insane, the things, like, my key takeaways, my favorite parts were where they were looking through the Walmart truck full of, uh, expired meat, <laughs> and oh, then they, God, they yes. made the pizzas with the expired meat <laughs> oh. that they sold in the restaurant. <laughs> God. Uh, well, they were, those people were only paid, like, $120 a week. Yeah. It so, was mostly volunteer based. <laughs> wow. Well, it was interesting that they had three different strategies. One of which was like, I'm going to pay people, but not a lot. Another was like, I'm going to trick people into volunteering for my tiger thing. And mm-hmm. Doc Antle is like, I'm going to have a bunch of women that are just part of my sex cult. Yeah. They all are very cultish, you know. Yeah. They, like even Joe Exotic, he he would drive around to the, like the bus stops and see people who had been sitting there all day, who obviously yeah. had no place to go. Uh, a lot of these people were people who just got out of prison, so they had no options, you know. So he basically like went around and. Uh, preyed upon the vulnerable and was yeah. like, you're going to come work at my tiger farm. You're going to have a place to live and you're going to have food. Uh, and I'm not going to pay you hardly any money, but it's better than sitting at a bus stop. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I think one of the most insane parts of it was like the, uh, the, the worker who had their hand um, eaten uh, went right back to work like the next week. 
Well, yeah, she than... was she was out for five days. She had like her arm amputated for because the tiger or, ate a it. A tiger bit her hand off. No, and... it didn't bite it off. It bit her bad, and the doctor was like, "Well." You can have your oh, use yeah, of your right. hand again, but it's going to be like six months of reconstructive surgery and rehabilitation. And she was like, nah, just cut it off. Yeah, you're wow. right. You're that right. was the yeah, fuckest bullshit. Right. Fuck. That was fucking wild. That was the moment she- where I was like, what is going on in this fucking thing? <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm having a moment right now because... Well, I know, like, amputation is one of your biggest fears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that just fucking wrecked me yeah, right now. Yeah, you're right. She could have saved her hand, but she chose not to. And she was back at work in five days. That... And she went before the press and was like... Because they knew they were going to get some bad press when that happened. So she went out before the press and was like, no, it's fine. It's no big deal. I was <laughs> asking right back for at it. Work. <laughs> Also, um, did anybody else notice that Joe had an EMT jacket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like on the wear? day of. Yeah. <laughs> Where did he get that from? <laughs> <laughs> Probably an army buy Navy anything on Etsy. store. <laughs> he just like would wear it, I guess, when there was emergencies, so that he would seem important. Like he, I don't know, it was really bizarre. <laughs> so. I, I I have a I have like a, a synopsis of what's going on with this show, but I have a, I have a really weird question. Do, this documentary that they were filming was going mm-hmm. on, and while this guy was kn- knowingly getting all of this shit documented, decided to like plan a murder. Yes. So, yeah. So <laughs> yes. his and his he wanted to film and stream his entire life. Uh huh. Everywhere he went, he had people follow him with cameras. Everything he did was filmed or streamed online. He no, had no. a show very similar to you <laughs> 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 that he would do every night. Wow. Um, so <laughs> he the real is basically Michelle hasn't watched it. Is yeah, she, it's like... she's worried that she'll feel bad. <laughs> so he's well, now just I am. living his <laughs> he's just living his life doing whatever the fuck he wants and okay. all of it's getting filmed the entire time okay um but the thing that is so weird about it is that so he would threaten carol baskins all the time online and i feel like that you're not allowed to do that like i have some sort of idea in my head that you can't outright tell somebody you're going to kill them or have a blow up doll that is dressed like them and be like, this is what I'm going to do to you and shoot it in the head. Um, but all the police and lawyers are like, well, we couldn't really do anything about it because he's just saying those things. He's not actually doing anything. And it's like, uh, I didn't think you're allowed to do things like that, but apparently you are. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I thought threats were like, uh, an issue. Yeah. Cause some of the stuff he said and did that was filmed that he'd put out on Facebook and shit was like, just outright, like, I'm going to kill this lady. So yeah. it was really bizarre. <laughs> and, and then he took it one step further and actually went to her, like, her sanctuary mm. and and started, like, flying a heli- helicopter over it. Like, ugh. That he was, was super yeah. obsessed. He was trying to figure out where all the tigers were because she claimed she had, like, this many big cats, but they only saw, like, this other number. But he was like, the thing that killed me, though, about all of these people is that they, bottom line, they did not care about the animals. Um, he was like, when he was flying over them in the helicopter, he's like, oh, I just want to drop grenades on, like, her property. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, you obviously none of you guys really have the animal welfare in mind you know mm. yeah well i i think that was one of the things they got into at the end of it was like hey all of these people appear to have given a shit about animals at some point but then they got into this field and liked making the money or liked leading their sex cult or fucking whatever mm-hmm. and the animals fell by the wayside yeah, it was... Uh, so, I think the most dissatisfying part of the documentary for me was at the end when he went to jail, I was like, okay, well, his um, his animals are probably going to be, like, dissolved or sent to places, you know, where they can not be in small cages and have food and shit like that. But it just got, like, transferred over to some other guy, uh, and they just rebuilt a new 
a park and it's like okay well these animals really didn't get happy endings you know so it was like that's super unsatisfying in my opinion and then the statistic at the end was very alarming too that there are more domestic or there's more tigers in privately owned like zoos and and people own them than there are in the wild Mm -hmm. like there's like ten thousand tigers in the united states but there's only there's like under four thousand in the wild i'm like jesus christ like what the fuck? Like, I don't know how to fix this problem. I feel like it's a very, like, it's not a straight answer problem, but we should be doing something a little better. And it's also bizarre to me that the U.S. doesn't have any laws against uh, breeding and keeping these endangered animals here. It's, I don't know, it's it's all just really bizarre to me. I'm not surprised by that, mostly just because people constantly ask those questions about pandas, and the only reason why pandas are regulated at all, at all or is because of China mm-hmm. and the international laws we have with them. Um, but uh, I'm not surprised that because <coughs> tigers don't have those rules and because no. they are endangered, that they've been allowed to breed them even at like um, – in not in poor conditions yeah <clears throat> yeah so john steinbeck has a quote um and it's uh, uh something along the lines of americans uh regard themselves not as poor but as temporarily displaced millionaires so I, yeah like there's this idea that people think that they're going to get rich or like like super absurdly rich and i am mm. and that's why you know people want low taxes on the super wealthy so that when they become super wealthy they'll have low taxes and i imagine yeah. there's an element that is i don't want there to be anti tiger owning laws because one day i could probably own a tiger yeah that makes yeah. sense that yeah that makes a lot of sense <clears throat> So, Hutch, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Hutch. She's like, I just want to talk Where about... Where do I begin? Hutch just wanted to uh, aim us at a thing. My, my, my question is, are you guys listening to country music more now as a result of this show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I... At, not as a result, but yes. <laughs> so Chris at work also watched this documentary and has been messaging me like constantly about it. And... We played the we played Joe's music videos at work on our last few days while we were there. <laughs> well, apparently he didn't write any of those songs, and that's not actually him singing. Oh, really? really? Yeah, there's yeah, that's right. Another <laughs> band. I'm Mike Clack as I Google. Um, Which makes sense because I didn't think it sounded like him at all. <laughs> so I enjoyed that when he was singing at his husband's funeral and he was singing but over himself. <laughs> like yeah. they just played his song and he and then he just got up and sang like with it. <laughs> wow. It's like what's happening? That was it's another the most that was another toe deaths yeah. the Clinton that was another Johnson band. Thing. That you don't know about. I don't think I told you about no. it. So he had multiple husbands. I do know about that. All of them were straight, apparently. Okay. <laughs> uh, but one of them got really depressed and ended up committing suicide, like on site. And they had they didn't have the suicide itself on camera, mm-hmm. but there were, he like walked into a building where this other guy was sitting doing office work and shot himself in front of the guy. So the guy who saw it happen, you had his reaction on camera. Oh. So it was really insane to just see that. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, there was just so much shocking <laughs> shit in this documentary. Like, I was not prepared for half yeah. of it. That, that I, I feel like I know everything about was, it. And I, I, I hear something new almost every yeah. time it gets talked about. That guy was Joe Exotic's campaign manager for when he ran for president. Yes. Oh, that guy. Okay, go. great. So I did yeah. show Michelle the clip of the John the John Oliver clip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she did see that. Yeah, and I had seen it before back when it was like new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of bizarre. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. I still yeah, think oh my, my my other favorite thing was when they met the kill for hire at Applebee's. <laughs> 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 well, where else? Yeah. I, I think that's more of an Outback know. Steakhouse place. Yeah, I agree. You, you want to class it up just a tad. Yeah, you want to get a Bloomin' Onion. Mm-hmm. You want to get the Alice Springs Steak? Is that right? 
chicken. Alex Springs chicken. Mm, yeah. That's the one with... Mm. Is that the one with cheese on it? I don't remember. Yes. Yeah, it's got <laughs> cheese, bacon, and mushrooms. Mm. God damn it. Uh, now I want that. Now I want that, too. We talk about the... Like, we talk about Outback in this podcast, like, once every other month. and Because um, we're waiting for them to send us our check. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Outback. <laughs> this episode is not brought to you by Outback, unless Outback Steakhouse uh, wants to give us some sweet, sweet fliff. <laughs> Before we end, uh-huh. um, so the one of the the, the crazier, well, cra- oh, uh. <laughs> so the um, the reality like filming shit, like so it's got the scene where for some reason he takes like his phone or some camera and to go like chat with his lawyer when he's having like a falling out with the, the director of the thing, and records the whole like conversation alluding to him giving the recommendation like. Well, what if he just, uh, does he have any backups of the, the footage he's got? And so he's basically implicating himself in the arson. Yeah. Wow. Of, of yeah. this dude's footage. Uh, yeah, I I don't know why he has that or gave it to anyone else. Exactly. Like, I feel like every single person in this documentary should be in jail. Like, everybody is Everybody. Like- everyone's like kind of admitted to doing stuff and it, yeah it was just a fucking wild ride the so the filmmaker i i i um uh, heard that um he moved to dallas or somewhere else in texas mm-hmm. and then his apartment was um caught on fire yeah there too so really yeah <laughs> I, I don't know if there was any foul play with that but just some just some shit going that on is with insane i kind of feel bad for the for the people who documented this but at the same time i'm also like like you to be around these people something had to like there was yeah. got to be a trade off somewhere it's like imagine that you live on the jerry springer show <laughs> is what this show is like yeah that's insane just yeah. crazy no rules hey, just have right have you ever had house <laughs> <laughs> if no, <laughs> learn something. Just tiger the meth. All right, well, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and close it up there. I'm sure we're going to talk about Tiger King some more at another later segment. I don't know how, but it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. I you really should watch it. I'm probably going to watch it after this. I'll uh, I'll sit with you and watch it again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just hold it's her fine. hand and comfort her through the dark times. You might need to. You might need to hold my hand and comfort me in some of these moments. I will. Because you know I can't stand awkwardness. Yeah. And oh, you're in for a wild <laughs> ride girl yeah i there's a re- like i watched like like 10 to 15 seconds of this show at a time mm-hmm. with like behind your back and i'd be like nope <laughs> just nope right out of this so if i watch it i'm going to be like an like an episode is going to be a day for me yeah that's fine <laughs> you need a day to process what's happened so. okay all right all right for and, well, for and, col- if, it, and for- if you and if you want more video content about crazy ass zoos check out our past heat wave episodes yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure. hands on account of <laughs> her experience God. Ash- or new river zoo is what it was called <laughs> wow we should go That's up right. there and ask him if he knows carol baskin i should ask him that <laughs> fuck that guy <laughs> fuck carol baskin Let's just kick him in the dick and yell carol baskin and run away <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Bye, everybody. Right, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye.